Well, hello, 7th grade math students. This is Mr. Reeves with you again. And today we are looking at sample spaces for compound events and talking about the counting principle, how we can find the total number of outcomes given a description of the events that are occurring. So uh, I thought I'd just go through some of the problems from Khan Academy and IXL and kind of explain it as we go. So this first problem here from Khan Academy says that Nora and Rana are shopping for a Christmas tree. They are deciding between two different types of trees, real and fake, and four colors for the ornaments, white, silver, gold, and purple. They each created a display to represent the random sample space, excuse me, to represent the sample space of randomly picking a type of tree and a color for the ornaments. So first of all, let's uh, take a, a look here and make sure we have an understanding of going on, of what's going on. We have two different types of trees. So that's the first thing we need to understand. There are two types of trees, real and fake. And the next thing we need to make sure we understand is that there are four colors for the ornaments that we can choose from. Whoops, that wasn't supposed to happen. Four colors for the ornaments. So the first event we're looking at is has two uh, possibilities, and the second one has four. So one of the ideas that we need to understand is that if we have two choices of the type of tree and four colors, we're going to be looking for two times four, or eight possible outcomes. All right? And we can see that in the displays that these girls made. So if you take a look at the top display, this is Noor's, we have these two options. We have real and we have fake. And then if she goes with the real, she can go with white, silver, gold, or purple, right? So that represents the four options that go with a real tree. And then if she goes with the fake tree, we also have four possible options. So if you look at the bottom, this is called a tree diagram. A tree diagram. If you look at the bottom of the tree diagram, it gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight options, right? Four with the real, right? Real white, real silver, real gold, real purple, right? Or we have fake. Fake white, fake silver, fake gold, and fake purple. So that shows us eight possible outcomes. Got it? Okay. So that one appears to be correct. All right, so let's go ahead then and take a look at Rana's display. So Rana has real white, real silver, real gold, and real purple, right? That part of her table here corresponds with those choices there. And then she has fake white, fake silver, fake gold, and fake purple. So if we take a look at these, they actually gave the same information. Again, right here, we have our eight outcomes, right? They're just represented in a table. This one is a table, whereas the other one was a, uh, a tree chart, okay? So which one is correct, boys and girls? That's right, they are both correct. Both are correct. So we can check our answer and see that both are correct. Awesome. We did well. We did well. We should go on to the next question, don't you think? All righty. It says you're playing a fantasy game that allows you to create your own character. There are five options for the race of the character, and there are three options for the character's main tool. If you randomly choose the race and the tool, which of the diagrams could be used to find all of the possible outcomes? 
All right, so again, let's take a look in reading the problem and make sure that we carefully understand what's going on. All right, at the beginning, we have, let's see, there are five options for the race. It's interesting, I guess, human race, orc race, hobbit race, elf race, all right? And then three options, three options for the character's tool. All right, so the tools, let's see, the tools are magic, sword, and slingshot. All right, so the question for us is, which of the two diagrams shows us what's going on? By the way, when you have five options for the first choice and you have three options for the second choice, we're looking for a total of 15 outcomes okay 15 outcomes is what we are looking for five based on race three based on tool all right all right so let's take a look at the choices that they gave us so right here if we look at this first table we have three columns right a purple column a blue column and the orange column that represents their tools. And then we have one, two, three, four, five rows, right? And that represents their race. So I see an elf paired with magic, an elf paired with a sword, and an elf paired with a slingshot. And then I have a hobbit with the same things, a human with. So this is looking pretty good to me, diagram A. I'm interested to see what they did in diagram B. All right, well, in diagram B, if you take a look, it's also 3 by 5. It's 15 options, so the number of options is correct. All right, but if you take a look, we have only three races, and then they have five tools, right? One, two, three, four, five. So this is three races and five tools, but the problem says that there were five races and three tools, right? So we want the five races and the three tools instead of this next one that gives us only three races and five tools. So even though both of them gave the same number of outcomes, only the first one gives the correct outcomes. All righty. Let's do one more maybe of these Khan Academy questions. Take a look. All right. We're back to the tree diagrams. All right, Desmond lives in Melbourne and is taking a trip to Sydney. All right, we're hanging out down under. He can travel to Sydney and back three different ways, by a bus, a cab, or a train. Desmond chooses how to get Sydney, how to get to Sydney and back at random. All right, so we're trying to find all of the options here. So there and back there and back and if we take a look at what our options are he has three different ways he can get there three different ways he can get there and three different ways he can get back so three ways to go and three ways to come back so again we have three options to go and three to come back three times three is nine so we're looking for a total of nine options again three to go and then three to return. All right, so it says, choose which diagram is correct. Well, if we go to the end here at this one, I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So unlike the last example where they both had the same number of outcomes, this one has eight outcomes. And this one here has nine outcomes. And just a moment ago, I said we want actually nine outcomes. But let's not just check the outcomes. Let's, let's take a look here. So we have going, right? And then we have returning. Let's see if this bottom one that has the right number of outcomes makes sense. So if he goes, he could take the bus, and if he does that, he can come back by bus, by cab, or by train. 
If he goes and takes the cab, he can come back by those same three choices. Or if he goes and takes the train, he has those same three. So here's our three, right? Times our other three, which gives us a total of nine outcomes. This one sure is looking good. All right, if you, if you take a look at this one, it doesn't make sense to what we said. Which of these is going and which of these is returning? Uh, maybe they want us to divide it this way, like this is going, all right? But if he goes by bus, he can only return by one option. So I'm not quite sure what this diagram is trying to describe, but it's not describing our problem. So the problem that we like, the diagram rather that we like, is diagram B. And if we check that, we're doing well. All right. All right. So I'm going to jump out of Khan Academy and go over to IXL. And on IXL, you were given two practice skills. All right. The first one was finding the number of outcomes. All right. So if you understood what we just did, this really shouldn't be too bad at all. All right. So I'm going to work through some of these with you and we'll see what we can come up with. All right. It says you pick a marble and you flip a coin. How many outcomes are possible. All right, well, let's take first, take a look first at the marbles. How many different marbles do we have? We have two marbles, right? And how many different coins do we have? Now, that's not really the question I should ask. We only have one coin, but the coin has two sides, right? So what we're looking for, the number of outcomes that we are looking for is two, actually let me go with the colors that I used, two times two, right? Two times two gives us a total of four. So we're looking for a total of four outcomes. So I'm pretty sure four is the answer that we're looking for. But just to make it a little easier to understand, let's go ahead and put blue and let's put green. And these represent our marbles. Now, when we come off of those marbles, we have two choices, right? We have heads and we have tails and we have heads and we have tails, right? So if I were to go here and let's see if I can make an arrow here that's not dotted. Let's make it solid here. I could have a blue marble that goes to a head or a blue marble that goes to a tails. Come on, give me that little arrow. Oh, it doesn't want to give me the arrow. I guess it's too close. I can have a green marble that goes to heads or I can have a green marble that goes to tails. This is really bugging me. All right, so I'm going to put the tail a little further over here and then see if I can get that arrow to show up. Oh, my goodness. Huh. Oh. Okay, why is it being so... Oh, no, I made it disappear on that one. This is just insane. This is crazy. Heads, tails. All right, whether we get an arrow or not, we're sticking with it. Heads and tails. No arrows. Oh, well. And what are our options? We have blue heads, blue tails, green heads, green tails for a total of four choices that we could have. Yes, we are fantastic, aren't we? Okay, so let's take a look at this next one here. We have a spinner. The spinner has how many options? The spinner has three options, right? And this coin, what does this coin have? The coin has two outcomes. Let me use the word outcome instead of option because really you're not getting to choose when you spin, right? When they were making that Christmas tree earlier, they were choosing it, so it really was an option, but now it's more of an outcome. What is the possible thing that could have happened? So if we have three outcomes on the spinner and two outcomes on the coin, what are we looking for? We're looking for three times two or six total six total outcome possibilities right and again if we were mapping them out is this orange i think it's orange it could go orange heads orange tails that's two it could go blue is this blue or purple whatever 
All right, let's call it blue. Blue heads, blue tails, that's two more, right? And then green, definitely green. Green heads, green tails, that's two more. Two plus two plus two, or two times three is six. So we're looking for a total of six total outcomes, right? All right, let's see if we can skip to a harder problem here. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Now we don't have just two events going in, we have three events going in, right? But the process is still the same. Let's talk outcomes. Right here, marble group, we have three possible outcomes. Right here, one, two, three, four, five, we have five possible outcomes. And then here we have the coin, and that has two possible outcomes. So what have we been doing with these numbers every time? Have we been adding them? No. Subtracting? No, I don't think so. Dividing? Not a chance. We have been multiplying. Three times five times two. All right, three times five is 15, and 15 times two is 30. Or if you prefer using the commutative property, five times two is 10 times three is 30, or how about three times two is six, six times five is 30. Doesn't matter how you do it, what order you do it in, you're going to get 30 possible outcomes, and we are amazing. This one right here, two, six, and two, right? Two times six, two outcomes, times six outcomes, 12 outcomes, times two outcomes. How about 24 outcomes? Rock and roll, right? And this last one on IXL, it's the same thing, except they're just giving us words, right? And instead of, uh, instead of these being outcomes, at least on this first one, these are those options we're talking about. Two options for meat, nine options for cheese. What are we going to do with those two numbers? Are we going to add, subtract, or divide? No, sir, Bob, we're going to multiply. All right, four types of meat, three types of bread, four times three. We're not going to add, subtract, divide. We're going to multiply. Does this get any more difficult? Let's see what we got here. All right, two assistants, seven doctors, three receptionists, two examination rooms. Oh, my goodness. What do we got here? We got two physician assistants. We have seven doctors, three receptionists and two examinations room. And what are we going to do? Are we going to add? No. Subtract? No. Divide? Not a chance. We are going to multiply. All right, here we go. Two times seven is going to give me 14. Three times two is going to give me six. Seven times six would be 42. So 14 times six is 84 possibilities all you got to do with these numbers is multiply let's put in 84 and what's it say super duper does it get any harder all right let's see one type of nut one type of dried fruit all right oh he's going to use one there's actually nine types of nuts and three types of dried fruit all right and wait, we're going to add nine types of cereal. So nine, three, and nine. So the numbers are getting a little bit more complicated. There's more of them. But if, all, if you remember that all you got to do every time is multiply. Actually, it's nine types of nuts, three types of fruit, nine types of cereal. Well, nine times nine is 81 so 81 times three i think is going to be 243 243 that is a lot of choices for trail mixes can that really be correct and it is all right so i hope you see how finding the total number of outcomes and applying the counting principle really is not that difficult at all. You just take all of the number of options or all of the number of possible outcomes and you don't add, you don't subtract, you don't divide, you multiply. All right, glad I could be with you guys today. School's almost over. I really hope this helped you learn. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.